For the past three years, we've been trying to preserve a carved pumpkin and resin with varying levels of success. This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform for all your website needs. Year one was Francis. We tried to carve him and then just pour resin on him. And turns out that very basic approach was not enough to keep him from rotting completely. <laughs> I need to go in for a fresh wrap. <laughs> oh God. Which is why the real Francis is no longer with us. Year two was Bean, and to prevent him from rotting like poor Francis, we decided to dehydrate him first. And it turns out the pumpkins have a lot of water in them. Ah! Oh and while the resin has kept Bean looking relatively fresh, the dehydration process took a big toll on him. Oh, Bean. <laughs> Year three was Meatball. <laughs> and we figured if we just covered him in enough resin, Surely he would be preserved, right? And while the result is pretty impressive, you might notice some imperfections. We had to do six layers over the course of eight days. And so you can definitely see the layer lines. And two, we're pretty sure he was already rotting before we got him covered in resin. We believe this led to him pulling away from the resin, leading to this like ghostly white haze over most of him and uh, leaking a bunch of juices, which you can see. Oh God. Can you see him sloshing? Yeah, I can see it sloshing. Yeah. Oh, geez, that's so weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just noticed something. About meatball? Those cracks and fractures <gasps> used to not be here. Oh. He's, oh, he better not leak. He's busted out. <laughs> but for year four, we want to try embedding another pumpkin in a full cube of resin, but avoid all of the issues we faced with meatball. But how are we going to do that? We have a really Cool idea. It's a refrigerator. Oh, my back hurts. How do you spell refrigerator? <laughs> There's no D. So how is the refrigerator gonna help? Oh, jeez. It's because heat is the enemy. Science adjacent, we're laughing in Caitlin. Yeah. yeah. With deep resin pores, you have to avoid the catastrophic issue of thermal runaway, which happens because... Number one, resin releases heat as it cures. Heat causes resin to cure faster, and that's okay if you're following the manufacturer's recommended thickness. But if you pour it too thick, then too much heat is created. Therefore, you have this cycle where the resin is curing, it's creating heat, the heat causes it to cure faster, which creates even more heat, which makes it cure even more faster, and all of a sudden something over there is smoking and shit is melting and everything is ruined. Which is why we had to pour meatball in six separate layers. But this is where our fridge comes in to help. So the resin we use has a max pour depth of two inches. And again, we wanna do this all at once to avoid the layer lines and the rotting while avoiding thermal runaway. And we knew that there must be some way to responsibly break the rules, so we turned to the internet. And that's when we found BM Sculptures who poured a foot of resin without thermal runaway because he did it in a fridge. But a fridge isn't the only new thing we're trying this year. So many of you guys recommended that we sterilize the pumpkin before we preserve it. And there's a big debate between bleach and alcohol, so we're just gonna test both. We have to start this project pretty far in advance to do these tests. So it's August and nobody sells pumpkins right now, so we got the closest thing we could find. Melons. They're, they're squash. I mean, squash. <laughs> I told you, I just told you we got squash. I'm really excited about just spraying pure bleach on this and seeing what happens. Cause I think it's not gonna be good. Oh, you think it's gonna like dissolve it? Something like that, right? You know? Oh, very pumpkin-like on the very inside. Very pumpkin-like. Right? This, this, this has to be an amazing pumpkin analog cause it feels like we're carving a pumpkin right now. If they can grow squash all year round, why can't they grow pumpkins all year round? Because we're the only people in the world that would buy them. There are my fellow Halloween starts right after 4th of July people out there. We exist, there are dozens of us. Thorough coverage. Science. 
Okay, so we actually have a little time lapse station. Look at this access panel. This is very professional. I know. <laughs> So it's been five days. We've been collecting time-lapse footage. I put it together without reviewing it so that we could look at the transformation yeah, and together. react together, ready? Yeah. So day one, you can see that a lot of them are drying out. The bleach is still really wet looking. Oh, you can see them shrinking. shrinking. Oh, oh mold, mold. Mold is starting on diluted bleach and the 99% alcohol. Oh, oh Ooh. my gosh. Okay. The control is the only one without mold. This is weird. There's some like weird, whoa, it let's do the whole thing. On the control, I saw some black spots, but that's just cracks. By far, the control is the best one. So, you know, in some ways, it makes me feel better about our past attempts because they would have been worse. They would have been worse if we bleached in that's alcohol. That's crazy, yeah, so. <laughs> oh my God. Man, black mold. Look at that. That's horrible. This is probably the worst. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of black mold. That's intense. I just don't understand. I'm sure we're going to get interesting comments about this, but like, mold? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I, don't, I can't explain this. I don't know, man. But this got warped. Yep. And most impressively, the control. There are a very small amount of black mold. That is mold right there. Oh, okay. I still think we can say that there's a clear winner. By far. And I'm a little disappointed that we didn't come up with some grand improvement to help us out, but at least we know now. Yeah, we don't need to like think, oh, if only we had of. No, 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 no. We know it's the best. But we want to do one more test. Another thing you might notice about meatballs is he's a little bit yellow looking. And that's not his fault. It's just any small hint of yellow in the resin is amplified when it's a foot thick. And so one thing we wanna try is, can we use a little bit of blue to counteract that yellowing? It's a trick some people do. Other thing we wanna try is like, what if we just add a little bit more orange or yellow and then it looks on purpose. Lean into it. And so we have some little test pumpkins and we have some little test cubes. And we're gonna try this out. Look at this. Isn't That's this cute? The, oh, I'm, okay. Look at that! It's very cute. Oh my gosh, I just love these in general. Resin time, resin time. Do, 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 resin time. Alrighty, and we have even one more test we're throwing in in the middle of the coloring test. We want to test to see if this pump can pump resin and not cause any issues or bubbles. You put one end into the source, lock that in, and then it'll come out right here. <laughs> so it's controlled with a foot pump, right? So, yeah. you it's know. A, it's, it's, it's on off. It's on off. Oh, look at the resin. It's flowing through the tubes. It has, oh, there it is, I see it. Oh. There it is. That's gentle. Okay. Let's turn it up. Let's turn it up a little bit. Oh yeah, so, there it is, there it is. Very cool, and it looks pretty pretty bubble free. It doesn't look like it's adding any new bubbles to it. That's amazing, okay. I love this. I'm turning up the intensity. That's why it's shaking? Yeah. Can you believe there's a resin gadget we didn't have yet? Beep, 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 beep. Okay, he'll be our little control guy. All right. And now it's time to make some colors. Let's start with the blue. The color is Honestly, different. Honestly, I think that, that pouring it adds more bubbles than pumping it. We're uh -huh. not testing the bubbles too much right now. There you go, sleep tight, little guy. Ah! Where's, where's my torch? <laughs> yes. Yes. POV. <laughs> you like fire and there's bubbles to be popped. I'm liking the colored ones more. Interesting. What if we do glitter? We could try it. Supplies. It's all the resin color. Oh, yes. Powders, pigments. It's all here, man. I got it all. You want some, you want some uh, uh, orange zinc sulfide glow in the dark? I got you. This is already looking amazing. What an aesthetic. Before they change, comment which one is your favorite right now. And then if it changes after the resin is cured and we demold them, Comment that too. And if <laughs> if uh, you have had lunch today, comment that. On three, let's point to the one that we're most interested in. Okay. 
One, two, three. Mmm, interesting. So we're both going for like orangey toned ones. Orangey toned ones. Yeah. I think that if we had have toned this down a little bit. It's too late to do one more. I think it's too late, baby. We're out of resin. I was like, what, we, what if we combine like that and this and what's left in here? It's no longer a grid, and all of the comments that everyone left is now ruined because we added one more. You gotta do it again. Sorry, everybody. We'll see how they change as they cure. All right, let's see if any of these have changed. Ready? Hey, yeah. They basically look the same. The sparkles? Oh, the sparkles kind of cleared up. The yellow is about the same. I, look at the pink. That I definitely like that changed. One. All right, let's get these out of their molds. We originally did this dyeing experiment because I was curious how blue would look, make it look more glass-like, but I think it just desaturates the pumpkins too much. I agree. So I think so, we can eliminate that. They're out, yeah. I also think we can eliminate the yellow because it just looks like extra yellowed resin. Yeah. And the glitter, even though it's cool, I think it'll be a little bit too cloudy. Yeah. The orange is too orange, which brings us down to these as the finalists. So we have purple, clear, light, the orange tinted, pink, and the mishmash. What do you think about pink? I prefer this one because it yeah. it feels a little bit less neutral and the pumpkin stands out more. Yeah. Same with this. I think that this one is better. The pumpkin stands out more within it. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so we have the purple, the lightly tinted orange, and the clear. The clear doesn't look clear to me anymore. It looks a little bit yellow, a little bit green. I think this is the safest, honestly. While I like the purple, I would want to go lighter than this, I feel. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I'm looking at the pumpkin, I think this one. Me too. So All I think right. we will lightly orange tint the resin. Ooh. Oh boy. That was a process. I know. We have the resin we're going to use. We have the pump we're going to use. We know that we're not going to spray it with anything. All we need now are pumpkins. So come on, October, get here. <laughs> I did. I asked if we could film here. <laughs> and she said yes. I told her we we're making a YouTube video and she was like, yeah, it's fine. That's cool. I got sweaty. <laughs> if we can't find our next uh, test subjects here. We just need pumpkins of a precise shape and aspect ratio. Yes. All right, we have our three pumpkins, the resin, the control, and the backup. Now it's time to go carve them. <laughs> it is finally time to carve our pumpkins who are named Dingus and Chuck. I can't believe that we started this project over a month ago. And we're still not done. Now, we also want to say thank you to our Patreon and YouTube members who named these guys. So yeah. if you're impressed by the creativity of the names, it was them. All right, well, let's pull this in, which doesn't look disturbing or creepy at all. <laughs> Our tools. Do you want to carve your bottom hole first? My butthole? Yes, I'd love to. Thank I like you. calling them bottom holes. I don't. It's the bottom of the pumpkin. <laughs> it's the butthole. I'm excited about this. <laughs> As you see, I've lined it up with the center of the butt. The bottom? With the center of the butt. She's got a little... <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. You don't need to say it, just leave it implied, baby. He's, he's, he does have a little... <laughs> indentation. indentation. He's got an indentation. I was gonna say anus. <laughs> Caitlin. <laughs> I just, I can't push down on it because it's above, it's like above my head. Can you give me the booster? Thank you. God dang it! Right, there you go. Now that it's been started. <laughs> can you hold the pumpkin? If you hold the pumpkin, I can do it. Yeah, I got the pumpkin. <laughs> Run in reverse. Billion times easier. 
<laughs> Why didn't you tell me that initially? Because <laughs> I like watching you struggle just a little bit. <laughs> gutting ball. The gutting ball. There we go. Oh, oh, I got hit, I got hit. Okay. It sure is easier when you start in reverse. But you need to do it forward initially to drill in the drill. Then you need to switch to reverse. I just like, you know, it's a hard balancing act for me as someone who like is a little bit more mechanically inclined. Cause like, 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 like watching you do things, when do I help? When do I step in? People get upset either way. If I let you do things wrong, people get upset. If I step in too early, people are gonna get upset. And like, to some degree, I'm just okay with that. Oh, oh that was a productive one. We're ready for carving. Ah! Doctor? Doctor? Dingus? <laughs> you won't feel a thing. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. <laughs> like I understand why when you buy a pumpkin carving kit from the store, it's like the kids safe tools, but really, it's hard to beat this. This is still incredibly satisfying. And, right, then, and then just connect them. Yeah, then you just connect them. Precision. Okay, I'm a little imprecise, but that's why we use the machines. Ha! That's perfect. Dingus, you're coming along great. This is, Working smarter, not harder. <laughs> Look at that. Say cheese. If we're gonna preserve something forever, we might as well make it precise. Exactly. Chunk looks so happy and ready to meet you guys. Dingus is, has accepted his fate. <laughs> and we're gonna get to Chunk in his resin in a second, but first, we made a time-lapse station for Dingus so that we can see how he decomposes compared to how Chunk decomposes in the resin. So there's one part of this project that caused us a ton of anguish and debate, and it's how do we make sure that this pumpkin then gets fully filled up when we pour in the resin? Because if we poured in the resin right now, there'd be an air pocket at the top. We don't want that. So what we're gonna do is- Hopefully a better version of what we attempted last year, <laughs> which is drill a hole in the top of his head and hope that that allows the resin to fill in the top of his head. Right at the top. Okay, yeah. What if we did two holes? Let's do two holes. I really don't want there to be an air pocket. The holes are pretty camouflaged. Yeah. The other thing that we were worried about since we're doing this all in one pour is we don't want the pumpkin floating up. What's denser? Resin? Pumpkin or resin? I don't know. I don't want to find out. So we made this lead donut. Yup. You know, his butthole is only so big if we want to put something in there. <laughs> Keep on going. Okay, so it needs to be small enough to go into the butthole, but big enough to not come out. And so Evan came up with the idea of a two-part donut. I should be able to set this in here gently. And then, there you go. Yeah, there it is. And you can see oh, yeah. now. I see it in there. There's a lead donut and it can't fall out even if it slides like this. Yeah. So now we have a lead donut weighing down this pumpkin. And we have something to reveal that's been in here the whole time. Hundreds of dollars worth of resin. We don't want this to kick too fast. This resin is only rated to three inches deep and we're pouring it 11 inches deep. Okay, that is better. Lower the happy little guy into his final resting place. Let's close the refrigerator for now and let's mix up four and a half gallons of resin. Now the bucket for this is inside of this giant vacuum chamber. Oh, I just realized something. We're gonna pour four and a half gallons. <gasps> it's gonna here. bubble up. It's gonna bubble up. We're gonna have to do it in two batches. Okay, what we do is we mix four and a half gallons in here. Then we pump half of it into another bucket. We boil this. We pump the boiled into here. And then we swap buckets and do the other half. That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. It makes sense? Okay. In my head. Wait, this is the biggest single resin pour we've ever done. Wait, but isn't this the same size as last year? 
Oh, but it wasn't year. a single pour. Exactly. Oh. This is, I oh. think, going to be the most resin we've ever mixed at one time. Put that in the title. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you calculate how many drops we should put in? We did 20 drops for 24 ounces. How many ounces in a gallon? I thought you, you were going to do the math. I'll do right now. <laughs> so we're gonna have 128 576 divided by is 24 times drops. Times 20 drops. 480 drops. Ah! Uh, are what we gonna- What if we just squeeze until we think it's right? No! I mean, but that to be the point! Caitlin, I'm not counting to 400 and something. 480 drops. It'll start evaporating by the time you get to like 400. We could weigh how much 10 drops weighs on a precision scale, which we don't have. Look into this abyss of resin. You can't even see the bottom. Look at this. That's so much resin. One, two, three, four, 50, 60, oh my God. 70, 80. <laughs> Oh, it's getting like, I don't, I don't, it's getting kind of chunky. I should mix it in a small amount of resin. Yeah, look at that, it's got chunky. Right, let's do this. Might get a little bit messy, but that's okay. Quite the time to experiment. I mean, I know we have, oh, oh geez. So like this will be the resin, no matter if it's chunky or weird colored, like this is it. It's character, it's texture, it's life, it's giving me, uh, <laughs> a headache. Oh, a headache. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. I think it looks more pink now. It's definitely not orange. I think my biggest worry isn't necessarily even about like getting it mixed properly. It's, it's about the orange flakes. Yeah, for me it's the chunks. It's, 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 for me it's the chunks. So I'm maybe, really worried about the chunks. Maybe we call it now in order to minimize chunks. Minimize chunks. Hey, we added some guys. We did a great attempt. I feel like I should be wearing my Fail University merch right now. Everything good? All right. Why is it so... It's very slow. Is it like clamped too tight or something? Now, I have another idea. Do you want to scoop it with a cup? I worry about drips going everywhere. What if we build like a little drip bridge? Drip bridge. I'm gonna put on gloves. Hand me a cup. Ha! Do you want a paper towel around the handle? Let's not even bother. Let's just go full resin. I'm gonna need like a full resin cleaning after this. Also, um, your hand is dripping onto the floor. Oh, it is. And the table and elsewhere. Kind of a hot mess of a project. <laughs> Let's vacuum this resin, baby. It should start happening soon. I feel like I'm seeing some bubbles. All right, all right. Come on, Claudia, look at that. Oh, it's going. It's it's going. going. It's going. And I wasn't recording. You were recording! <laughs> oh, baby! Oh, hey, Chunk. Okay. So you're gonna try to pour it? Oh, boy, I'm gonna try, baby. If this works how I think it will, which, you know, everything is going just like we planned. Okay, now we just have to do uh, this whole thing again with another bucket. All right, oh, I feel like a long distance runner at the end of a race. Yeah. Or something, you know what I mean? It's been a marathon resin session. <sighs> please be enough, please be enough, please be enough, please be enough, please be enough. Okay, that's like over a quarter. That's great. I think we're done. Oh boy. Good night, good night, Chunk. Good night, sweet prince. Let's keep him here for two days and let's see how he is. Preserving pumpkins is so tiring. If only there were some better tools for the job. I should scroll social media ads to find some. That's always a good idea. Do you have pumpkin carving problems?
Try the new Pumpkin Gutter 5000 for carving pumpkins with ease. These patent pending gloves have razor blades attached to each finger for maximum destruction of pumpkin guts. Wow, I want those. Where do I buy them? Wait, they don't have a website? But I want you to take my money. Take it, take it. Don't be like me. I didn't have a website and I didn't sell any Pumpkin Gutter 5000s. That is until I built my online shop with today's sponsor, Squarespace. If you want your customers to be able to buy your creations, view your portfolio, or schedule services, Squarespace has you covered. With their Fluid Engine, it's so easy that anyone with a dream can make a beautiful website. And their flexible website templates work well on every device. So if you want to sell your creations, build a portfolio, or make that one great idea come to life, I can sell that. Squarespace is your one-stop shop. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to pull the trigger, go to squarespace.com slash Evan and Caitlin for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, it's actively bubbling. Oh boy. <laughs> no. I haven't even gotten ready yet. I'm not ready. I'm not ready for this. Okay. Is it chunk or dingus? I'm assuming chunk. It's chunk. Oh, those are some big bubbles. Oh my god. They're actively popping and coming out. Where are the bubbles coming from? He's bubbling. It's not the resin, it's Chunk. Why is Chunk bubbling? Because he's an organic being and he has air within him. Uh, should we just pop the bubbles and try to make the fridge colder? Like, what do we do? Grab a stick, pop the bubbles. That's step one. Oh, it's okay. like a, it's a shell. It's a gooey shell. Whoa, that's pretty hard. Yeah, but then like poke it here. Whoa, that's soft. I know. Ow, cold, 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 cold. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> Let's look at the good news. Yeah. The fridge is not melting. Nothing caught on fire. Nothing is smoking. Is he bubbly? Yes. Is the fridge warming up? Yes. But is it ruined yet? No. No. <laughs> I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is we'll be able to demold sooner than we thought. The bad news is this really did continue to kick. Look at this, look at look at the corners. Look at oh, how Oh, they much, fully pulled away. Look at how much that warped. Also, look at this. <gasps> is that resin goo? I, I thought that was juice. I thought it was gonna be juice. I think where the juice was escaping, it cooled the resin and kept it from curing as fast. So the resin is gooier oh. around the juice or like messed up the curing process because it mixed with part A and part B. I cannot believe he pulled away so much. It's like, so much. like a quarter inch from the corners. He's not a cube. He is a cube-like boy. One thing I will say is I'm very curious to see how he's gonna look when we demold him. Yeah, the resin still is clear and he still has a nice orange color. So there's that. Now, I kind of know what's going on and I think that we should take him out today. Let's show them what he looks like. <sighs> he looks even warpier, doesn't he? Yep, it goes all the way down, but the thing is, it's pretty hard already, even refrigerated. So I think what we should do is we should take Chunk out of the refrigerator, let him warm up at his own pace, fully cure, and then demold him. <clears throat> this is strange. Can we switch sides? Stop us. Three, two, one, lift. And down. Oh my God. Good Lord, I'm worried. Chunk, we're worried about you. And this video. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly the video. <laughs> <laughs> 
What do you guys think about our Halloween outfits? Anyways. <laughs> I think it's time to take Chunk out of his mold and see what we're working with. What? What? Why? What? Why is it like a film? Why are the voids so big? Why is it solid right here, up to here? This makes no sense. <laughs> I agree, I agree. What you're feeling? Mmm. Mmm. <clears throat> mmm. Oh. oh, come on. I mean, I kind of expected it. I know. It's really big voids. We were trying to avoid that. <laughs> Careful. Come on, get out of there. <laughs> hey, 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 hey! He's just blowing bubbles underwater. He's just blowing bubbles out of his eyeball. <laughs> we might be able to salvage him. We might be able to fix him. You know, if we get out our power carving tool. And we get rid of imperfections that would be hard to fill with resin. And then we fill him with resin again. Can we fix him? I'd rather not have to make a chunk too. I'd rather not have to make a chunk too. Not gonna lie, I was pretty nervous to carve Chunk. While we have power carved before, it was like four years ago, and we've only done it on wood, not resin. And uh, it turns out that resin chips are a lot sharper. I just realized I'm bleeding from chips hitting my hand. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I was like, why am I so dirty? Go, uh, let's go take care of that. I'll get gloves on, and let's, let's take care of those wounds. I mean, calling them wounds is a bit dramatic. This is intense, baby. This is intense. You're intense. <laughs> this is such a process. I hope it's worth it in the end. So, all three of us need a shower. But only one of us is gonna get filmed this chunk shower. <laughs> I want to see what he looks like under there. He's, he's wet. Oh, he's rough looking. Yeah. Oh, he's rough looking. Hopefully with a coat of epoxy, it'll fill it all in and it will look great. Oh my gosh, what have we done? I don't know. <laughs> We just have to keep digging deeper. Dig the hole deeper at this point. Dig the hole like, deeper. we can't stop now. Why not? We Why have not? to keep going. So, we just shower and contemplate life. I don't know if Chunk is gonna turn out like we're hoping. We plan on doing a resin pour on him to see if we can make him better, but I don't know. Juby, what do you think? Can we fix him? Whoa, look at that! It's looking clear. Oh my gosh, it's magic. Whoa, whoa. It is warpy. It is, it is warpy. Face reveal, <laughs> chunk face reveal. Oh, he is cute. From farther away, like, <laughs> like from the camera's perspective, the warpiness is less, less noticeable. It's never a good thing when you make something and you're like, just stand further away, it'll look better. <laughs> oh, Chunk. Oh, Chunk. I know it's not your fault. Hang, hang in there, my, my man. Oh, 
Chunk. We have our three pumpkins. The one we're gonna embed in resin, the control, and the spare, just in case we mess something up. So we have collectively come to a decision that I am struggling with and doubting even as we say it. I don't know if chunk one is good enough. We set out with a goal to improve the mistakes we made with Meatball. And in some ways we have. The resin is way more clear. There's no layer lines. But at the same time, I feel like we can do so much better because we've learned so many things. And so we have decided to call it on Chunk 1 and introduce you guys to Chunk 2. We're doing it again. We're going to do all of it again. I'm sure this video is gonna be like an hour long, but this next part will just be like a montage for you guys. But for us, it's gonna be like another week of work. Yay! It's Yay. late, it's late. At least, we can check how Dingus is doing. How's Dingus? Oh, family reunion. Let's go check on him. The chamber. What? He's not doing well. I mean, it's, we kind Dingus. of expected it. Dingus! <laughs> no! Dingus and Chunk 1 aside, we're excited to move forward with Chunk 2 because we have some changes in mind to keep him cool. First off, we're going to create a column of solid resin beforehand that we can insert inside Chunk 2. This means we won't need as much resin for the final pour, and less resin means less heat generated. We're also going to turn the fridge even colder to 38 degrees. We also realized that we forgot to add googly eyes to our new resin fridge and vacuum chamber, and I think this could have been a factor contributing to our failures. We have one more cooling trick up our sleeves, but next it was time to carve chunk two. Through all this, we had hoped that Dingus would live to see chunk two, but sadly, we had to say goodbye to him 13 days after carving him. Oh, dingus. Finally, it was time to submerge Chunk 2 in resin. So much resin. So much resin. Oh my gosh, so much resin. That's a lot of resin. Wow, that, that's a lot of resin. Wow. But then we noticed something had gone wrong. Oh my gosh, he's floating. <gasps> Chunk 2, why would you do this to us? He's got lead weights in him. We did everything the same. Why is this happening to us? What do we do? Add more lead weights through his eyes. Once we had weighed Chunk 2 down, we moved on to the final phase of keeping him cool. We lined the fridge with plastic wrap so we could fill the whole thing with water. Water holds temperature better than air, so we hope this makes a big difference. Okay, it's the next morning. At this point with chunk one, the fridge had raised nine degrees, the resin was getting really hard in spots, it was visibly warpy, and there was like juice bubbles escaping. So I'm a little nervous to check on chunk two. First off though, the fridge has not raised temperatures. Yes. It is where we set it, and I yes. think that's a good sign. Yes. <laughs> Oh, he is a beautiful boy! <laughs> oh, look at that! He's not bubbling, perfectly clear. He is perfect. I'm like a little teary. Like, I'm a little emotional at this moment right now because like, if he was bubbly, if it happened again, I was gonna be so sad. But look at him. Now we just have to monitor, monitor him, make sure he stays cool. We want him to raise up in temperature a little bit. I think we still need to monitor him. Yeah, yeah. Pretty closely. So we wanted to drain the water so that Chunk 2 can fully cure all the rest of the way, and I think he needs to get a little bit warmer to do that. But we're a little bit nervous, because tomorrow we're gonna be flying to Vegas for TwitchCon, and we won't be able to babysit him anymore. I'm worried. I hope when we get back, he looks okay and he's cured. Because if he's not cured, 
I will be upset. <laughs>